Thank you. I'm Fredrik Zetberg, marketing director of the company. An improbable idea that might work. This is an abstract, one of the very first preclinical studies. It was presented at the Swedish Orthopedic Society annual meeting in 2011. A lot has happened since then. Now I would like to give you an update on the progress and what we have ahead of us. Before I start, I would like to clarify some terms and definitions that I will talk about today. COS is a frequently used PROM, patient reported outcome measures. Uh, COS is commonly used for evaluation of the clinical outcome of the knee procedure. Revision today has nothing to do uh, uh, with accounting. It's about the procedure done in order to, uh, to compensate for a failed implant. When I'm out presenting our technology to potentially new user, I sometimes get the comment that we have new evidence. That is wrong. We have a very comprehensive preclinical material. That is not always the case within the medtech industry. We also have clinical evidence. We have the first manuscript, which was published with the follow-up of 10 very first patients to receive an epithelial implant in Sweden. It was published in 2018, and the manuscript concludes that it's safe and that the technology also provides significant improved knee function as well as pain relief. It also finds that there are no implant loosening. That's highly important when we talk about orthopedic implants. Second publication is a case report. It's for a 31-year-old Danish carpenter, and I would like to uh, tell you a little about, about his history. 31-year-old, in the middle of his life, he was told by several surgeons that there were no more treatment alternatives available for him. He would have to give up his career as a carpenter. And what's worse, he wouldn't be able to play with his son anymore. Three months after the surgery, he was able to go back full time as a carpenter. He later on also were able to play soccer and handball. He was also able to play ball with his son again. One could argue that this is anecdotal. It is, but is it less relevant? Anyone who has a child would understand the difference that Bacillor made to him. This is about the history. Now about the pipeline. We have two clusters of users who decided to pull their, cl their clinical results and submit it for publication. The first study I will talk about is a two-year follow-up of 30 Swedish patients. It's uh, led by Dr. Anders Stolman at Capio Atro Clinic. A two-year follow-up, uh, the results show significant improved knee function as well as pain relief. It also shows very low revision rate. And I will talk a little bit more about the revision late, rate later. It has been submitted for publication. We expect it to be published within the coming months. Second study, it's a continuation of the very first study with the first 10 patients. It's now five to seven year follow up. There are still no revision. And when I talked to Anders last week, it told me about amazing results. And we sent out a press release about it. The positive results at the 24 month follow up still remain at 75 months. We're now talking about sustainable results. So, manuscript in progress, and he promised that it will be submitted before the end of this year. The third study I'm today very proud to talk about it's a European multi center study that reports on the outcome of 80 patients who received an epithelial implant. It shows significant knee improvement, pain relief, and very low revision rate. Also this one. It was 
yesterday accepted for publication. I wish we had the time to go through the author list from that study here today. I recommend you to Google the names on this list. Previous speaker, Professor Emans, is one of them. Next speaker, Dr. Johannes Holst, the principal investigator of the study, is the next speaker after me. Anyone in our industry would be very proud of having all these names in the manuscript with their products. They are all our customers. They have performed this study not because we pay them, but because they are proud of the results and they want to make the epicelar available in the treatment algorithm everywhere. Looking at the results, this is COOS. COOS goes from 0 to 100, where 0 is the worst and 100 is the best result. The dark green bar shows the preoperative result and uh, the light green is of the two year of the surgery. It's uh, a minimum of eight points improvement is required to say that the improvement is clinically relevant. In each subdomain we show at least three times the minimal required improvement. And it's all significant. We now know that the epicelle works, but how is it different compared to other treatment alternatives? This is about revisions, here converted into survival rate. Looking at the green bar on top, uh, sorry, green line on top, that's the epicelle. If we look at the dotted blue line, that represents one of the more complex treatment alternatives. Autologous chondrocyte implant. It's a procedure when it works, provides very good result for the patient. Unfortunately, in middle-aged patients and older, the revision rate is relatively high. The same is the situation with microfracture. Nor does the first generation media metal implant show as good results as the epicelar. For the first generation metal implant, the revision rate were at 18% at two year follow up. At five year follow up, the revision rate were 27%. We are in the publication that was uh, uh, approved for publication yesterday at 2.5% at two year. Look at rehabilitation and recovery. This makes sense not only for the patient, but also from a health economic perspective for the entire society. Our patients, as the Danish carpenter I told you about, they are back working after three months. They are walking, they can ride a bicycle when their friends who had biological treatment alternatives are still on crutches. You can imagine if you are sitting on an insurance company and should decide on which treatment alternative you should support and reimburse. What do we have in pipeline? More. We have a survivorship analysis that we just submitted where we report on the number of revisions versus total number of epicelar procedures. Uh, where we also report on the reason and outcome of all to us known revisions. We have a comparative study performed at Charité University Hospital in Berlin. They compared the knee result of epicelial patients with the knee function of patients who received a total knee replacement as well as healthy non-treated knees. The information we have from the study group is that they are very impressed of the knee function of our patients. We restore the joint. A cost utility study. We have together with Linköping University uh, prepared for a cost utility study. The model is ready and once the results from the ongoing studies are published, we can plug in the data from those studies into our model and it's ready for submission. This publication will be very important for us when we apply for reimbursement in new as well as existing markets. <laughs> 
the EPIC knee. It's a comparative randomized trial epicelar versus microfracture. It's one of our most prioritized initiatives right now, and my colleague Katarina will tell you more about that one. Will our clinical evidence have an impact on the sales results? Yes, it will have a significant impact. We have unique evidence that our technology work, that it provides improved knee function, pain relief, and it's sustainable results. We have the uh, evidence enough to approach any new user, any healthcare provider or insurance company. We have no reason to be hesitant, modest or defensive. We can allow ourselves to be far more aggressive in our marketing. We will make sure that any potential new user know how Epicelar can help them to improve the life for their patients as it did for all of those patients who shared their story with us. <laughs>